Welcome to Travel Babble with Basha. I am Basha, your hostess today, as we dive into cruise line codes and emergency drills. You know those codes. You hear them over the intercom system. They're a secret language between the crew. And you wonder, do I need to be worried? Is something happening? Don't worry. Most of the time, the codes are simple instructions for the crew. But let's look into a little bit today of what they mean. And I'm going to break these down into different categories. Let's start with medical. You may hear alpha or alpha, alpha, alpha. Now you will notice as we go through a lot of times some of these codes are said either once or they're repeated three times. Again, it may depend on your cruise line how they say it. Different cruise lines will be slightly different. Should I be concerned about alpha? Alpha usually means there's a medical emergency somewhere on the ship. It may say alpha and then it may state a theater or maybe it'll state a specific stateroom, but it's a designation to the crew, there's a medical emergency, and then it lets them know where it is. Star code. This is also a medical emergency. Again, followed by a location. Sierra. There's a medical emergency and they need a stretcher. So it's a little bit more than the alpha or the star code. And that may only be heard on the intercom in the medical area. So you may never hear Sierra unless you happen to be in the medical area. Now, what about Operation Bright Star or Code Mike? That means not only is there a medical emergency, but it's very serious. And get on it right away. Operation Rising Star, or you may hear Operation Fallen Star. Those are a little bit more serious. That means there has been a depth on the ship. You'd be surprised this does happen a lot. You'll notice, especially on some of the older, longer cruises, you tend to have an older population and you will have those. I had one on one of my cruises towards the end of last year. The lady passed away that was about two or three staterooms down from me. It is a sad thing, but at the same time, she was doing what she loved. You are also going to have some codes that will have colors. Blue depends on where you're at. It could be a medical emergency or it could be hall damage. Depends on the cruise line. Codes yellow, orange, and red are usually used for some type of illness outbreak. So some early stages of a norovirus in infection. Red is more serious. Yellow is less severe. And then we have Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Hopefully you never hear this one. This means that the ship is probably going to come to a complete stop. It doesn't stop on a dime, remember, but there's a man overboard. This will let you know that it has happened. And depending on where you are, look out at the water, see if you can see anything. If you do and a crew comes out, get out of their way. But if they can't find the person, you can point and say, I saw somebody over there maintenance. A 30-30, that means they're calling maintenance to clean up a mess. It could be something simple as a spill. Maybe somebody was walking through carrying a big plate of food and it dropped and made a huge disaster and they need somebody to come clean it up. Purell, 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 or just Purell. Again, there's a cleanup needed. PVI. These are words that you don't want to hear. It means somebody has vomited in a public area. Please, please, please come and clean it up. That does tend to happen if people have the drink package and they have overindulged a little bit and then there needs to be a cleanup. Let's move on to our next category, which is damage or potential damage to the ship. You may hear Bravo, 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 Bravo. I've heard on Disney, you may hear Red Party, Red Party, Red Party. These all indicate a possible fire on the ship. This is one of the biggest fears for people on a ship is fire. Where do you go to get away from the fire if you can't put it out? It's a big, 
issue. And it's also why you are not allowed to take certain items on the ship because they consider them as possible fire hazards, such as candles. If you want to make your room romantic, you don't want to take candles and light them. You can take little electronic or battery operated ones. That's because of the fear of fire. So if you hear Bravo, you may be a little concerned, but they're really good and they know how to fight these fires and put them out. A lot of times there may be a fire on your ship and you never even hear about it. Code blue, as we mentioned earlier, it could mean something as a medical emergency, but it could also mean potential damage to the hull. We don't want our hull to be damaged. Then water starts leaking in. Think Titanic. We don't want to hear that code either. And if we do, I want to assume it's a medical emergency. Not saying medical emergencies are good, but it's not going to have the ship going to the bottom of the ocean. We have Delta. Delta means, again, damage to the ship. You may hear Delta, 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 which indicates a lot of times there's a biohazard on board. Echo. The ship is starting to drift. If you ever have been on the bridge and you're looking at their monitor, you may see like a red line that shows the path of the ship on autopilot. And for some reason, if you hear echo, we've started drifting off that line. There could be many reasons that are not of a big concern and are easily fixable. However, you don't want the ship to drift into the path of another ship. Think of two big, large cruise ships colliding. That is not a pretty picture. So as soon as they... You hear echo, the captain, whoever needs to be up there looking into what is going on. Kilo. Cruise personnel need to go to their assigned station for their posts. You might want to be prepared if you hear this for further instructions to the passengers. Unless it's during a drill, this may mean there is something that needs to happen. They're all being sent in preparation. Code Papa means they've had it, some type of pollution or an oil spill. Something has been released and or they're seeing something and they need to take care of it. And code purple, not a good one. There's some type of bomb threat or there may be a chemical or a biological threat on board. Again, this is one that I've never heard. I hope to never hear, but if you do, be prepared. I have a special category for children. Now, some of these you may hear on land and not just on cruise ships. For instance, Code Adam, there's a missing child. Now, the one thing that is good with a missing child on a cruise ship is they hopefully have not gone very far. They can't get off the cruise ship. Of course, they could be overboard. In that case, we would worry. But Code Adam, you may hear. Code Pink is a missing child, but that child is under one year old. That's a concern what happened because a child under one year old generally cannot wander away as easily on their own. Hopefully their parents were watching them, so they may need to look into some type of abduction, what happened with that child or where did they go. So Code Pink is, again, a missing child, but it's a younger child. Code Baby Ruth or Operation Winnie. This means basically the children's pool needs to be cleaned. There was um, an accident, should we say, is that I've heard them say you need to clean the poo out of the pool. And that's where the Operation Winnie came from. Let's move on to security. Unfortunately, things do happen on a cruise ship. People, especially when I've said they have the drink package and they start drinking too much or they're on vacation and away from home and they forget their manners. And unfortunately, I have heard this. I have seen this. The first one is code black. This is not anything good, obviously. It's there's some type of potential violent confrontation or there may be a suicide threat. So they're tr calling security to get there immediately. If it's a suicide threat, maybe to talk somebody down or some type of violent con confrontation, can they cool down the people who are involved? Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. I have heard this one. 
there's some type of onboard security threat. Now this could cover a lot of area and it may be a small threat, it may be a large threat, but I have heard this and I have stayed out of the area. So if you hear any of these codes and it mentions a specific area of the ship, don't head there. Security needs to get there and get this taken care of as soon as possible and they don't need your help. Code gray, an abusive person or a combative person. We had this on one of my ships a few times ago that there was a person who was being abusive and it was reported to the cruise director who took care of it. But this person would get on the elevator with a stranger and was making people very uncomfortable. And luckily they were able to take care of it. They'd had several complaints and they took care of that but that is a code gray. Now, Zulu, Zulu, Zulu. I've never been involved in one of these, but that means there's a fight on board. I'm sure you have seen, if you've looked around, you've seen some of these videos of people who are fighting, and this is what let's see. Crew drills and crew emergency alarms. have heard this when you've been on a cruise ship and at that point I'm sure most of you were thinking what is this but it had been preceded by an announcement usually by the cruise director that the crew was getting ready to do a drill and please ignore all of the announcements and bells and whistles until they tell you the drill is over that you what you heard seven shorts one long is the announcement to get your attention that something is going to happen. However, they do play that during a crew emergency drill. Now, what does the crew do? There are safety management systems that are put in place and it's by the safety of life at sea. There are certain requirements for a cruise ship. They have to have two-way communication between all of the emergency areas, the bridge, everybody that's involved. All the crew needs to be trained. Every month, they need to do an abandoned ship drill and a fire drill. Many cruise ships will do this more than once a month for each. I've seen them on cruises doing it at least weekly. Now, many crew, when they report for their first contract on a cruise ship, they think they're going for one job, and really, they're going for two jobs. They have their normal job, whether it's cruise staff, it's engineering, it's on the bridge, it's working in one of the restaurants or one of the bars, and then they have their second job, something with emergency. They may be just overseeing an area where people come. They may be in charge of launching lifeboats. They may be in charge of making the announcement to the passengers. They may be in charge of calming down the passengers. So. Every crew member will have a role. Now, what does a crew drill involve? A lot of times you may have seen these. It's a hurry up and wait. The bells will go off. The announcement has been made that this is a drill. They find out what kind of drill. They know where they need to go. And they go there and then they stand, they check in. Occasionally they pretend maybe they've been called for a fire. They'll pretend like they're putting out a fire. They may have to, if they're simulating an abandoned ship, they may actually launch one or more of the lifeboats. They're, they're required to launch those lifeboats and test them out every three months, but they may do that just to try them out, make sure the crew knows what they're doing. Book learning is one thing, actually launching them is another thing. In that case, if you're walking around or you're going back to your stateroom, you may notice a tag hanging on your door. They're simulating that they checked all of the the passenger staterooms to make sure that they were empty if they're abandoning ship. If they're simulating a fire, you may notice that all the fire doors are closed and you are unable to walk through those. Keep in mind, this is for your safety or for the safety of passengers in the future. So don't interfere 
while somebody is doing the drill, stay out of their way. If you can't get the drink quite as fast as you wanted because you went to the bar, you don't get served your food as fast, understand that they're going through this drill for your safety. Hopefully this today has helped you feel a little bit more comfortable. If you hear that alarm or you hear certain codes, most of the time it is nothing to worry. If it is, you will be notified and the crew are there to help you. They're highly trained and they are ready to get you on to the next safe excursion, the next safe night, the next safe party. They want you to be happy. Now that we're comfortable and we're ready, it is now time to pack your bags.